Hello my friends and welcome back to our continued blind let's play Professor Layton in the Curious Village HD for mobile. My name is the Faultless Bird, this is your story based gaming channel and our story so far. The Professor and Luke made their way successfully to Reinhold Manor where they met Lady Dahlia. But before they could start talking, a loud noise startles Lady Dahlia's cat Claudia who runs off. Professor and Luke are now forced to find the missing feline. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic day today. As we're here in the restaurant, I don't think there's anything else to be added here. Because we've already done both of these puzzles. So let's head out the door. And I don't think we've talked to them yet either. So there's still a lot left to do. A manhole. I wanted to do to pop the top and have a look. I love how she's pointing at him and he's like irate. Okay, let's talk to her. I'm sorry they told me, madame. But have you seen a white cat run by? A white cat? Oh, uh, yes. It ran over that way to the park. I may I ask, what are you planning on finding with it once you find it? We are going to take it back to Lady Dahlia. It's her cat. And she's asked us to bring it to her. <laughs> and you're going to try and catch the cat barehanded? Oh, good heavens. Well, that's a bit naive, don't you think? Listen here, the cat's love treats to try learning it over with some food. What do you suggest? Oh, I got some old fish bones around here and I'm sure the little thing might go wild over. <laughs> You know what's funny about this is, uh, right now, I just finished, uh, Lunar, Silver Star, so it completes, uh, episode for tomorrow. I, I didn't complete the game, I just finished the next part. And right now, in the game, uh, we're in a fisherman's village, and there's this flying cat that accompanies us named Nal, and Nal is going all over the place, saying, Hey, we need to save this fishing village, because they got good fish here! <laughs> It's amazing how the games know what we're playing and they cross over. I'd be happy to give them too if you solve this puzzle for me. Alright, puzzle number 22. What is this one called? This one is called Pig Pen Partitions. What, are we going to play Agricola? Seven prize winning pigs are lazing about in a pen. To make sure that the pigs don't fight with each other, we decided to section off the pen with three ropes. Can you hitch the ropes up to some of the posts from below and separate each pig from its neighbor? Remember, not even a snout or curly tail can sneak over each partition. Uh, how many ropes do we have? Three? Three ropes. Okay. That seems simple enough. Okay, so... This one is a problem. Because... This is the only way I can separate him. Okay, so that will pass to go there because this guy needs to be separated. So I need to crisscross then. Because the only way I can separate this pig from this pig is by going crisscross. But if but I need to go crisscross in a way that will separate these guys. So this one to here. That's a tight fit. And then this one to here. Oh yeah! Oh, to a good start already. Heck yeah! That's the easiest 30 pick rots ever. Woo! Good job. You made a lot of pigs very happy. Yeah, you know, it's just... I, this one was easy because once I realized... And it didn't take me long to realize this at all. But, like, immediately my eyes went to this guy up here. 
And I knew that in order to separate this guy, I had to have the ropes intersect him in some way. But realistically, it could have been this guy. Or it could have been this guy. Like, either one of these three pigs would have led you to the correct solution. This guy's a tight fit, though. He, he's the trick in this one. Because he's sitting in the middle, which makes you think you can't extend it across because you're going to hit him. But there's actually a little bit of room on the sides. So he kind of throws you off, but yeah, it does work. I must say I'm very impressed. But here you go, then some fish bones, I promise. Good luck with the cat. Got some fish bones. Big pepper dish and salt. Oh, hello. She just showed up. Let me talk to this guy first. Oh, I just had it this time. I think I'm going to explode. Like a water balloon filled with rage. What's that? Why am I angry, you ask? Why am I angry? Let me near, will you, guy? There are these three bows in town, and we're just getting stand each other. Rabble, 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 it's so bad that none of us want to see each other's ugly mugs, but ain't Mr. E in a big place, right? Sometimes we cross paths on the way to work, and just like that, BAM! Time for a screaming match. Sure do wish we could find a way to keep from bumping into each other in the mornings. Hang on now. You look like you got a good hand in your shoulders. Do a favor and help me out with this, will ya? Okay, well, we went from puzzle 22 to puzzle 20. And this one is called Unfriendly Neighbors. 50 pick rocks. Draw a path between one man's home and his work by connecting matching blocks. It catches that these men can't see each other, so you have to make sure that none of the paths touch. Mega bath, all you need to do is. Oh! Okay, I think we've done these like zero escape before, have we not? Okay, so. Okay. So A has got to go around. I'm going to extend it far. I don't even need that. You can easily extend this way. It doesn't matter if it's that way or this way. You could also go. Nah, let, let's give ourselves some room. A probably has to do that. Um, because you're going to have to go around. C also has to go around. So C has to look like this. That's not going to work. It's not going to work because B, B, B and D aren't going to, okay, let me try A like this. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Let me start with C. And then A. Well, B has to do something like this. Let's start with B. If B is like this, A then would have to do that. Okay. Let me go back to my original idea, which is A has to take the long way around. And then... So I can't go that way. And I could go this way, but... Hmm... Hmm... I like this puzzle. Because I have infinite tries, so I can go ahead and try as many things as I want until I figure it out. Okay. 
I seem to come up one short every time. So I can't do that because now A and D. See, A would have to do this. And then C can't get through A. are a problem because that's the real question how do I get C and A once I get C and A the others are easy what did that just do can't do that Again, I'm, I'm like one letter off every single time. Because I can get three, but I can't get all four. I can't do that because now D has no way to get there. So C literally has to do something like this. A literally has to do something like this. Yeah, A literally has to do something like that. But now it doesn't make sense because... What I need is I need you to come up like this. There we go. There we go. Luke All right! Here's my answer. Woo. That was fun. That that was fun. That's right. Now those guys had to look at each other. Good job. Oh, it looks like there was some. Yeah, there's there's a couple ways to do that one. Uh, the trick is D. Figuring out how D works is the trick. Because once you got D, then you can get the others. Ah, thanks a million, guy. Can finally get to work without blowing my stick. I really mean it, Pally! You're a lot smarter than you look. Oh yeah, let me clue you in. It's that big old mess tied me on the town square. Take a tip from me if you know what's good for me, I'll stay away from that thing. Ha <laughs> ha, wait, wait, then I'm all things again, buddy. Got a strange gimbal. Got another foot. Let's go ahead and throw that foot on right now, shall we? Robo dogs coming together. Tee hee hee. That guy gets so worked up, like, turns red like a tomato. He looks so dumb. Okay. You don't have anything for me? You're just here to laugh at the dude? All right, fair enough. Okay, let us con- Oh, we've already been here. Let's go up. Oh, a puzzle in a bucket. That filthy jar reminds me of a puzzle I once heard. Right, what's this one going to be? Uh, the, this... Oh. I was writing the title down as this puzzle is worth... No! The title is Bottle Full of Germs. Ew. A glass jar holds a single germ. After one minute, the germ splits into two germs. One minute after that, the two germs split it again, forming a total of four germs. Continue at this rate, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. Knowing this, how long in minutes would it take to fill the jar if he had started with two germs? Oh dear god. Um, so this is an exponential thing, right? After one minute, the germ splits into two. One minute after that, the two germs each split again, forming a total of four. 
Okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on. So, one minute is equal to 2x. Where, um, in minutes, where x is minutes. Two minutes is equal to... Four X three minutes equals eight X. No, 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 wait. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. no, 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 no. What, what, what are you doing for this bird? You had it right first time. One minute equals two X where X is minutes. So if that's true, then after four minutes, you would have two times four, which is eight. Is that true? Um, we'd have two, and then the two split, so you'd have six. No, that's not true. That formula doesn't work. After one minute, the germ splits into two germs. One minute after that, the two germs split again, forming a total of four germs. Single germ can multiply. Oh, wait, wait, there's a trick here. Hold, hold on, there's a trick within the trick, okay? Uh, the trick is, the trick is that one germ fills the jar in 30 and one hour. Two germs fills the jar in 30 minutes. So I'm not trying to calculate for one hour. I'm trying to calculate for 30 minutes. Because of a single germ can multiply for the whole jar in exactly one hour, then two germs can do it in 30 minutes. How long in minutes would it take to fill the jar if you had to start with two germs? Wait, is that Really? This simple? I'm trying to do complex math here and I'm overthinking it? A glass jar holds a single germ. After one minute, the germ splits it to two. One minute after that, the two germs each split again, forming a total of four. Continue at this rate, a single germ can multiply to fill the whole jar in exactly one hour. Knowing this, how long in minutes would it take? Okay, so what I need to do is I need to figure out how many germs can fill a jar in an hour. Right? And hold on, hold on, hold on. I I'm not sure about that 30 minute thing. It may be right, but it could also be some like 45 minutes or 40 minutes. I, I don't want to take a chance. So uh, one minute is equal to one uh, is equal to two germs. Two minutes is equal to the, the two split. Um, one minute after that, the two germs each split again, forming a total of four germs. So, after two minutes, you have four germs. Then after three minutes, you have eight germs. Then after four minutes, you have 16 germs. So this is two to the 60th power. Okay, two to the, wish I knew how to use this calculator better. How do I do exponents? Two to the, oh, I'm not trying to do square roots. Ah, square, my computer calculator does not like me. Okay, online calculator is easier. So two to the exponent, 60th. Why can't I find a calculator that I know how to use? I, I need to go out and buy a calculator. Or use my phone. Where's my phone at? Uh, let's see. Uh, 2 to the 60th. There we go. I got now. It's a really big number. <laughs> That's not going to work. That is not going to work. 
That is not going to work. The number is too big. If the number is too big, then that can't be the right answer. Am I overthinking this? Am I really overthinking this? It's an exponential increase. Like, my gut says to put 30 minutes, but my uh, my other gut says that's wrong. And I don't know where I got the other gut from, so just don't try to think about that too hard. Um, hmm. I'm going to go with my gut. Even though I'm pretty sure this is wrong. I'm pretty sure it's like 45 or 40. How does this sound? Uh, yep. In one minute, one germ becomes two. In other words, the number of germs doubles by the minute. It takes a full hour to fill the jar when you start with one germ, so... Am I that much of an idiot? Hold on. I think I've got it. I totally overthought that. I totally overthought that. With two germs, you just accelerate it by one minute. So that means if it takes one germ 60 minutes, then it'll take two germs 59 minutes. Because you just accelerate it by a minute. Oh, I feel so dumb for not realizing that. The answer is 59 minutes. It takes one minute for a single germ to split into two. Therefore, starting with two germs, is that one? Only saves you one minute. Exactly. Exactly. I'm totally overthinking some of these puzzles. I'm like, okay, we got exponents. And you have to figure out how many germs. Then you subtract that by how many other germs. And I wonder if that would have been right, though. Like, if I had done it like that. Hold on. Two. Let me clear this out. 2 to the 60th power equals this really, 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 really big number. Now, I subtract that by um, uh, 2 to the 59th power? I, I, yeah, I don't think that would have given me the answer. <laughs> I don't think that would have given me an answer. Oh, I can't believe I overthought that one. You're spot on. Excellent job. The jar is actually kind of neat. Why don't we take it with us? But my boy, it's covered in grime. Hmm, what's this? Something's hidden inside the jar. Just gotta make sure we keep the jar away from Riska. I think you're right. Luke, reach your hand in and see what's inside, will you? Painting scrap, cool. What kind of lot just throws garbage wherever he pleases? The park is so overgrown, it looks more like a forest. That's a Ferris wheel back there. Oh, a coin. Arrival park over at 10 a.m. shop 5 p.m. Professor, there she is. Quickly then, use the fish bones. Here, Claudia, come here, girl. Meow. Aww. We've done it, Professor, here she comes. Excellent. Now we can head back to Vinehold Mana. Aww. Aww, I see, I just wanted something to eat, you guys. That's all. It's not okay, but that puzzle took me that long. <laughs> chapter 2, The Fugitive Feline, Chapter Solved. Lady Dolly Scott has escaped. Search Saint Mystery for the Runaway Feline. I was successfully caught Claudia. Professor Layton and Luke decide to head back to Reinhold Manor. I've become accustomed to moving around and investigating Saint Mystery. 
Here's some advice to give me an investigation running to Midley. Some puzzle will disappear from the location in town as the story progresses. But there's no need to worry. Most of the unsolved puzzles are sent to Granny Wilson's shack in the village square. Oh, excellent. Visit often to track down puzzles you passed up and work toward completing every puzzle in the game. That's a really nice feature. I know a lot of games I would just say, oh, well, tough luck. You missed out. Somebody doesn't say quite right, Professor. P -p Professor, oh, it's simply awful. Come quickly, please. Looks like he's flapping like a penguin. <laughs> What's the matter, Matthew? If you're worried about the cot, we brought you safe back safe and sound. Oh, well, Madam will be very happy to hear that. But this is no time to worry about a cot. I uh, just hurry upstairs right this way, please. Oh, hello. Tell me. So, you're the famous Professor Layton, then. Uh, the name's Chimney. Inspector Chimney. Chilmy. Chilmy, not Chimney. Chilmy. I am the inspector in this case. Well, I'd hardly call it a case, but this is about Claudia. We brought it back safe and sound. Oh, Claudia, my baby! Mama missed you so much! <laughs> What's the cat doing here? Why on earth would you bring an animal to crime scene? Have some seats! We were out when this crime took place and don't know what's going on. Wait, what crime scene? Could you please fill us in? Well, there's been a murder, Professor. Oh, no. What just happened? A man was killed here. What? Who was murdered? Well, the victim was a resident's address. One Simon Reinhold. Simon was. Okay. If if you would ask me. Yesterday. Hey, Flightless, who do you think the mastermind is going to be behind this game? I would have picked this guy. And this guy's dead. <laughs> I'm sorry. I... Uh, uh, well. That's the thing that happened. And the drawbridge is down. As I believe uh, someone pointed out. I forgot who it was exactly. But someone said, you know, hey, the drawbridge isn't working. And if there's a murder, that means we're stuck here with the murderer. And sure enough. I, I, although I'm pretty sure that person meant that the other guy was murdered. Not this guy. Approximately two hours ago, I received a report from men at Clubs at Reinhold Manor. Upon arrival at the scene, it was apparent to me that Simon was already dead. I see. And the cause of death? I am currently conducting an investigation to look into it. I'll just let you know right now, Mr. Layton, I'm looking at you as a potential suspect as well. The rest of the details concerning the investigation are classified. Speaking of the details, who placed a call to the authorities? Are your ears clogged, deaf? I just tell you, those details are class, right? Mm hmm? No way, everyone. I'm gonna take a statement so you're only in the other room. Come in one by one. Now let me make this clear. Under no circumstances, anyone to leave until I talk to everyone. Well, this ain't good. I don't think we need to check around again. The matter, the matter of this very house. Her bugs are tall to my spine at doors. You're a detective, are you not? Don't hurry, I'm fine that much or that does. this. My good sir, I am no detective. But I agree that your concerns are certainly warranted. No one is safe until that criminal is behind bars. My situation exactly. I just don't understand it. Simon could be snide, but he wasn't the type to be hated. The criminal was after my brother's fortune. I could very well be the Fiesler's target. You have a point. If we narrow the motives to stealing the Reinhold fortune, there are few potential suspects. 
Well, good gracious, you sure think I'd do something like this now? Simon and I got along very well, I'll have you know, uh huh? He wasn't very close with Augustus, though. You know, all this talk of families has been contemplating a puzzle I once heard. Sure, someone's been murdered and we'll solve a puzzle. Absolutely, I see how this game works. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, this one's called Bickering Brothers. Six brothers have gathered around a table to eat dinner. Each of the brothers is fond of fighting with his siblings directly above and below him in age, and can't be seated next to either of them. Also, brothers three and five got into an argument the other day and refused to sit next to each other. The eldest brother, brother one, has already sat down at the big table and is waiting on the others to start eating. Can you find a seat arranged without keep everyone from running with each other? What is this? First I deal with um unfriendly neighbors, now I'm arranging a wedding uh arrangement? Ah, uh, let's see. Okay, so uh, let's see. Each of the brothers point of fighting with siblings directly above and below. So two can't be seen next to three and four. So on. Also, brothers three and five got in an argument. I, I need to write this down. It, it, I think this is a type of puzzle where if I visualize it, it will help. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see. Got my pen and paper. All right, so let's let's talk about this, shall we? So, um, so you have one up here, and then you have these spots. Now, I'm gonna call these spots A, B, C, D, and E. Where A is this guy, B is this guy, C is this guy, D is this guy, and E is this guy. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna write down who can't sit where. We know that A cannot sit two. We also know that E cannot sit two. And that's because one is there. Okay. So we know two has to be in B, D or C. So two has to be in one of these three seats. I don't know why I wrote B, D, and C. That looks weird. I'm gonna erase that on my map of my book. B, C, and D. Alright. So we know two has to be on the bottom three. Now, if two is on B, that means. Three can't be at A, three can't be at C. So, uh, so it's like this. If I have two here, then three can't be here and it can't be here. So let's try three here. Five can't be next to three. So that would have to go there. Now, here's the problem. Four can't be here, but four also can't be here. So that doesn't work. What if three was here? Then I could put four here and six here. So I'm telling you, all I did was just write down a couple notes of what, where two couldn't be. And the puzzle suddenly got a lot easier, but let me double check this before I jump. Each of the buddies point of fighting with the siblings directly above and below. So five is not next to six or four. Two is good. Four is good. Three is good. And one is good. But three and five got an argument, kids sit next to each other. Three and five are not next to each other. Yeah, I think that's it. I think I've got it. Fantastic. Yes. Yep, just running that little picture out of my notebook helped a ton. Inverting this arrangement horizontally will also re result in a correct answer. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because if two was over here, six could be over there. And if three was, if five was over here, three could be over there. What matters is one and four always have to be across from each other. 
Good job. Sit the boys as shown and there should be any trouble. The mirror image of the seat arrangement is also a valid answer. Finally, a meal in peace. Oh, yes, that's, that's the answer. Thank you for clearing up the puzzle. We're still no closer to finding Shimon's killer. I assure you, I had nothing to do with that, so please go out and find the real murderer. Of course. I understand your position. It appears I am a suspect too. I'll find out what I can. Got another strange gizmo? We're not going to be complete with this game until we build this dog. That's definitely for sure. Oh, we got new journals. Claudia found. It was a long struggle that caused Luke some scratches to his face and perhaps his pride. But we finally managed to catch Claudia. I think that would be appropriate to make our way back to the mansion and inform Lady Dolly of our success. Matthew, did you notice any strange characters around the manor at the time of the incident? Oh, not a soul, I'm afraid. I didn't even know about Master Simon until Inspector Chalamet showed up. And where is Simon's party now? Oh, I didn't see this, but I was told that the inspector carried the body out shortly after arriving. I see. Well, it looks like, for the moment, we are without a lead on this case. Ah, oh, but you know, I found this in the room where Master Simon's body was discovered. What is this? I'm sorry to say I have no idea, but that might be a clue, so I'll make sure to hold on to it. Amazing. It's a cock so small that one could search this room and miss it. Look, it has an engraving. Drop cogs appeared. Okay. A, a small cog. Now that you mention it, I know a puzzle about an object that almost fits that description. What? Are you joking? A puzzle at a time like this? Well, that's what they do here, apparently, in town mystery. Okay, let's see. We have find the dot. You're holding an eight-pointed shape with the red dot on it. You hold the shape so that the red dot is in the position shown as diagram A. Then flip it over. You'll see a black dot as depicted below. Now assume you're holding this shape as shown on the left side of diagram B. Where will the dot be when you flip the shape over? Draw a circle around where the black dot should go. Okay, so first off, let's look at the arrows. Both of the arrows are going in the same direction. This dot ended up here. So the red dot moved here. So it should be here? I mean, it seems like a really easy puzzle. So the red, so the black dot is basically two to the left. It should be here. But no, it's probably here. Because think, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So the black dot should probably be here. If the red dot is there. Like, my gut says it's here, but my brain says it's here. Go with my brain. Luke, here's my answer. Dang it! Too bad. Focus on the relationship between points on the front and back sides of the shape. Front and back side of the shape. I mean, that should have worked. 
There's one, two, three, four, five. They're both going in the same direction. So if that's there, then it should be there. Should be two over. Alright, let's go with my gut. Instead of my brain. There we go. Both my gut and my brain are wrong. And that hurt. Lost four four more picarots. You're holding an eight-pointed shape with a red dot on it. If you hold the shape so that the red dot is shown in diagram A, then flip it over, you'll see the dot as depicted below. So the red dot is still here. It's just you flip this sideways. Now assume you're holding the shape as shown on the left side of diagram B. Well, the black dot be when you flip the shape over. So the red dot is up at the top, and then you flip it. And then the black dot is over to the left. Hold on, hold on. Let me... Let me pretend this is up. This is up. If this is up, the black dot should be... Here, which I've already done, but it's not here. The black dot should be two points away from the red, but it's not there and it's not there. So then where the heck is it? Hold the shape so the red dot is in position to show in diagram A, then flip it over. You'll see a black dot as depicted below. Now assume you're holding the shape as shown on the left of diagram B. Where will the black dot be when you flip the shape over? So the black dot would be here. And then when you flip it over, it moves there. But again, if, if the black dot is there, it would be there. I don't... What does Memo do? What the heck? Oh, I can write things down. Oh. Okay. Apparently I just erased the screen. Um, let's get rid of this. I, I got a notepad. I'm using that. I still don't understand this. In no world... In my brain is this black dot neither here or here. So it's gotta be two away. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to think of the relationship here. Okay, when I flip this over, the black dot is originally here. And it gets flipped. But again, that's two away. Which means it's either here or here. And I've chosen both of those locations. I mean, was my circle not good enough? 
Maybe like this circle wasn't like circled well enough. Wait, what if the black dot is here? And when you flip it around, it's where the red dot is now. That should do it. Ooh, yeah. Golly, that, that took way too long. Uh, that's right, take a look at the diagram for the answer. The black dot's position when A faces forward. The black dot position when A faces backward. Yeah. Rotate A to make B. When B faces backward, the black dot is on the lower right. Yeah, they basically just switch places. Ah, oh, clever. See, I thought it went up here. Like, I thought when he flipped it over, the black dot moved here. Clever, clever. Clever girl. My apologies, but I'm afraid I don't know anything that would aid your investigation. Not at all. This small gear is more than enough for us to go on. But I do wonder why you're giving this to us. Well, I believe you're a good man, Professor. And I'm confident you will put the whole of this puzzle together. I appreciate the vote of confidence, Matthew. Oh, I'm so glad I had to brute force that one. Tiny cogs. A small cog with an intricately carved insignia was recovered from the scene of Simon's murder. Or Simon's murder. Perhaps the murderer dropped it when fleeing the scene. Is this everyone who's present the site of the crime? I believe we are missing Ramon, sir. Raymond? Where is he and what on earth is he doing? Matthew, fetch Raymond at once. Uh, to be honest, madam, thinking on I've not seen Raymond for a few hours now. What? Don't tell me he's taking his will. No, hold on a moment, he's a suspect too. Perhaps he fled the scene of this crime. Where could he be at a time like this? What if the murderer got Raymond too? Hey, where did Lady Dahlia go? I believe Madame has retired to the journey room to relax on her own. She's a strong woman, but simply natural she needs rest after a terrible event like this. Very well then, would you please let her know that I have something I'd like to talk to her about? But of course, Professor, please wait here! Lady Dolly might act like an ice cream, but I guess she was shaken by today's events. Luke, if you ever wish to become a true gentleman, you'll need to start showing a little more sensitivity. Oh, of course, Professor, I apologize, that was wrong of me. Uh, madam, we'll see you now. Just head back through that doorway on the left. Oh, poor Simon. Murdered right here. I'm absolutely terrified. Bring this criminal to justice. I beg you. What a lovely vase. Got a hit coin. Yes. Got another hit coin. Yes, 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 yes. Those are some posh curtains. The entire garden is visible from this window. Another hit coin? On a roll? Ah, I didn't mean clicking on one to click on the portrait. Lady Dahlia, I have a deep suspicion this murder is connected to the mystery of the golden apple. What? It's too early to say for sure, but I think it's highly probable that the two murders are linked. And do you think that Raymond is somehow involved in all of this? Potentially, yes. However, as of yet, we don't have enough solid information to draw any conclusions. I see. If that's the case, 
I have a request for you, Professor. Find Raymond and bring him back here to me. It sickens me that I am being considered a suspect in this brutal crime. I must prove my innocence at once. As you wish, Lady Dahlia. We will ask around town to see what we can find. I appreciate your help, Professor. Well then, I'll be awaiting the good news in the parlor. Chapter 3, The Missing Servant. The Missing Servant. Not to mention that there's a murder that took place. Comb Saint Mystery for clues about Raymond's disappearance. We still got time. Now I can check the portrait. Hmm. Hmm. Who's the kid? Look at this picture. What is it, Professor? Oh, is that Lady Dahlia? She's holding a baby? That baby must be Baron Reinhold's daughter, then. Flora was the name, right? Oh, gosh, what a cute baby. L Lady Dahlia hasn't changed much, has she? You know, Luke, they say true beauty never ages. I suppose so, Professor. But even so, it makes me wonder if we can ask Lady Dahlia about it. Anything else? Oh, I better make sure I don't knock that over. Alright, let's head out. Pardon me, but we happened upon an adorable picture of you and your daughter Flora a moment ago. I beg your pardon. The picture of you holding a baby. The one that sits in the next room. I'm sorry, but you must be mistaken. I never had any children. Huh? My apologies, madame. I must have been mistaken. At any rate, time is of the essence here. Go find Ramon and bring him back, would you? If that's not Lady Darling, the photograph, then who in there could it be? I think we'd do well to ask the butler a few questions. Perhaps he can clear this up. Maybe it is her. She's denying it. Oh, hello. We got a puzzle. Uh, by the way, Miss Leighton, I hear something about your uh, puzzle. Couldn't you? This puzzle is probably blended when it left. I wonder if you have what it takes to solve it. Okay, what do we got? Um... Five suspects. Okay. Five suspects are called into police headquarters for questioning. They get the following statements. Oh, it's a logic puzzle. One of the five of us is lying. Two of the five of us are lying. I know these guys and three of the five of us are lying. Don't listen to what they say. Out of the five of us, four are lying. And then all five of us are dirty, rotten liars. The police only want to release the suspects who are telling the truth. How many people should they let go? Well, I mean, this is a very puzzle to brute force, but we're not going to try to do that, right? Okay, logically speaking, I got to work through the logic here. Okay. All five of us are dirty, rotten liars. One of the five of us is lying, two of the five of us are lying, three are lying, four are lying, all five are lying. Okay, if D is true, if D is true, E can't be true. Hold on, hold on, hold on. E, okay, I need to write this out, hold on. Um, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, let's try E first. All five of us are dirty, rotten liars. That means that everyone here is lying. But if everyone here is lying, then A, B, C, and D all contradict E. Because A says one of the five of us is lying. B says two of the five of us are lying. Which means 
that there's some that are telling the truth by logically speaking, right? So E can't be it. How about D? Uh, four of us are lying. If four of us are lying, that contradicts C. And it contradicts B. So D can't be the answer. Okay. How about C? I know these guys and three of the five of us are lying. Two of the five of us are lying. One of the five of us is lying. So... C... Uh, B can be true because it could be these. No. Three of the five of us are lying. So. Oh, this is breaking my brain. This is actually breaking my brain. Um, one of the five is lying, two of the five is lying, three of the five is lying, four of the five is lying, five of the five is lying. If all five are lying, how many people should they let go? I don't have to figure out who's innocent. I just got to figure out who is lying. Oh, I just had to figure out how many are lying, right? So one of the five of us is lying works with two of the five of us are lying. Three of us are lying. Still works that two of us are lying. It still works that one of us is lying. If four are lying, my brain just stopped working. I, I'm, I'm frazzled. I am frazzled. I am, I'm not thinking straight. I, I, I need to, I need to, I need to think of this logically. I, I need to process this. And maybe my brain got worn out by the other puzzles we've done so far today. Because this is, this is, this is legit stumping me. The police only want to release the suspects who are telling the truth. How many people should they let go? One of the five of us is lying. Two of the five of us are lying. Does it mean, doesn't that mean like they're all liars? I'm gonna go with my gut here. This is probably wrong. But I'm not gonna be tricked. If this is a trick, I'd rather get wrong than be tricked. There we go. Okay, like I said, I'd rather be wrong than get tricked. Wrong. Try to think like a detective, look for inconsistencies between the statements. Inconsistencies. One of the five of us is lying. Two of the five of us are lying. I know these guys. And three of the five of us are lying. Don't listen to a word they say. Out of the five of us, four are lying. And then all five of us are dirty, rotten lives. The police only want to release the suspects who are telling the truth. And we know someone here is telling the truth. Question is, how many are telling the truth? One of the five of us, four are lying. You know, if D is 
correct, that means there's only one true person. Because A, B, C, and E are liars. I know these guys and three of the five of us are lying. Well, three are lying. That means two are telling the truth. Which means... A works and B works. I'm gonna go with one. my answer. I took a risk on that one. I trusted D and D came through. That's right. Every suspect accused a different number of people. If anyone was telling the truth, it had to be one suspect, no more or less. The only suspect in statement fits that condition is D. Looks like he's a man there. How about that I actually hit the right answer too? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I suppose I should give you a tip puzzle serve. Hmm, you do best to use that brain of yours to find that golden apple everyone's buzzed about. Got a strange kiss about so Paul. Hoo hoo hoo! And on a strong note, I only missed once. Oh. Alright, yes, because this is the end. My name is Afla Isbar, this is your Beast Gaming Channel, and today, this was our blind let's play Professor Layton and the Curious Village HD from Mobile. Much love to you all. Hope you have a wonderful, fantastic day, and I'll see you again very soon. Until next time, so long, and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter, and you are brilliant, and you are loved, and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.